If you're anything like me and into 3D printing, you more than likely have a ton of partial rolls of filament sitting around collecting dust that you have no idea what to do with and you don't wanna throw them away because you're a filament hoarder like myself. And Sunlu's actually come out with a new product called the Filament Connector that I'm gonna be testing out in this video that's gonna help try and solve this issue of all these partial spools that you might have laying around. Now, I have one potential major gripe with this before I've even opened it and checked it out just because I've seen some other folks' videos. The Probably the best one out there that if you haven't already seen it and haven't already checked out their channel comes from Figure Feedback that has a great video showcasing this new filament connector and everything that it can do. And all the demos so far that I've seen of this device are just connecting multiple strands of filament together. However, that's not a real world scenario for me. I don't have just strands of filament laying around. I have partial rolls here and lots of them that I wanna try and re-spool onto another spool with this device. But I don't think you can do it just with this device. And we're, we'll test this out here right now. All right, let's open this up and see here. This is, should have the connector in here, which is a little plastic device that I believe heats up the two strands of filament. So yeah, it's got a little, protective cover there, you're gonna, there we go. We're gonna pop this open. We're gonna put two uh, ends of a different spools of filament there, or two pieces of filament that we can heat up and weld them together. But there is one little catch to this. Oh, it actually comes with a lot of connectors. So it's using these little tiny PTFE tubes to help weld those two parts together. And then you're gonna cut this away once you're done. Also, it just comes with a power cable. You're gonna need like a phone, you're gonna need a phone charger brick to plug that into. All right, let's see if this powers up. There we go. Okay, I think just the, uh, whatever this plug was just wasn't strong enough. So it's got different, it looks like filament options. Yeah, ABS, PLA, PETG, PA, PCL. I will stick with PLA. Oh, and then you can adjust the temperature here. So if I wanna put this up to, I don't know, like one, 95 for melting the two ends of PLA together, I can, it looks like, go ahead and do that. Okay, so here I've got the two strands of a filament inside the plastic tube there. Do I, does that mean it's it did its thing? I haven't put it in there yet. Oh, it's definitely hot, I can feel it. It's very hot right there. All right, yeah, it, uh, it definitely, mushed those two. I think I need to put pressure on both sides of this. And then the next part is we take in the back is where we can trim away the little plastic bit there. So you stick that in. And I only know this because of uh, figures channel there. So there's like a little, no, that's not even, what is that? Is that supposed to cut that? And do anything. Okay, so it does slightly split the tube. There we go. Yeah, so it did split the tube. And then here we have our welded pieces of filament together. That actually looks pretty good, the connection between the two pieces of filament that I mushed together after it heated it up. Uh, I was expecting to see a bulge or something like that there. It's it's uh, very it's gonna be very minor for that one tiny little spot here compared to the other areas. And here you can see that first attempt that I did on this end where I just must have not pushed them together firmly enough or maybe it was uh, just too hot when I was trying to mash it together. All right, so in general, this is a pretty cool little device, but we're not done. That's just like the, the tipping point there. That is just the bare basics of connecting two little strands together. Again, that's not the whole purpose of this. In my mind, it's I need to be able to weld these partial rolls together. Now this little device isn't, is gonna allow you to connect them, but you need something that's gonna help re-spool it from one spool to the other. And thankfully there are about a zillion different 3D printable design options when it comes to working with re-spoolers. I found a really basic printable file for a re-spooler that works with an electric drill that was created by Little Silver. And in fact, I printed this with some PET G on my Bamboo Lab P1S, but I also used the Sunlu four roll filament dryer, which is a really nice filament dryer. And I also just recently saw someone running a fleet of Bamboo 3D printers using a bunch of these dryers over on one of the Facebook groups. And for this re-spooler, I ended up needing a little socket here. This is a 3 8 inch to I think a quarter inch 
socket adapter that I'm gonna be able to use with my electric screwdriver and pop it directly into the opening on the bottom here to keep it locked in place. And before I start welding the two rolls together, I'm making sure that they're feeding into the same direction, that the arc of the filament, if you will, is gonna roll the same way and isn't gonna end up in a tangled mess uh, once I start this actual process. I think that's it. Yeah, there we go. These do not wanna cooperate here. I'm gonna hold this for a second to let it cool. Yeah, that did not work. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be really hard for me to show this, but basically it only connected on a very small tip where I angled the filaments to connect together. Good news is we can just clip it and try it again. And thankfully they sent a lot of these inside the box, the little PTF tubes. These are really thin PTFE tubes. The problem is it wants to continue to bend afterwards. Okay. That is definitely not the best weld in the world. And I ended up with a, a big bump on both ends of the filament. All right, let's give this a go. I'm using the Mark IV to help re-spool this. I've got it on the lowest setting that my drill bit offers here. I mean, it's re-spooling. So this part's working really well. I mean, this print works really well. All right, I'm dropping it down to 175 and we'll try that. Maybe that'll be easier. It's also hard to line up the spools to spool them into one another while sliding these tubes on and keeping everything angled the same way that they need to be fed in together so that you don't end up with a kink in the roll or that it goes from, you know, one direction to another for uh, for these. So let's see. Sun Lu, I love your filament, love that filament dryer. Not a huge fan of this. I get what you're going for, but it just doesn't work that well. It's kind of a pain. Like the, the ends of your spools, they curl. They're typically not straight. So as soon as I take it out, it wants to start curling right where that connection point is. And it's gonna try and snap itself when you do that. All right, let's put that in there. Let's see if we can break the plastic off. It's just, it's so finicky right where that connection is. Honestly, I think I'm more impressed with the re-spooler than I am with, uh, with the new Sunlube device there. But obviously the re-spooler, you, you need something like this to weld the two parts together. And after a whole lot of work, I now have my own custom blend of rainbow filament that I can print something with. And these prints definitely didn't go as I anticipated. They initially started just fine and ended up getting through at least one color transition. But as soon as I got to the third, it immediately got clogged. I also tried reprinting it again after clearing the clog and it again clogged up at the second transition. And it is exactly at that transition point where I'm assuming there's just an, an excessively large bulge from where the two joints connected together and it just cannot pass through properly. And at this point, I think what I'm gonna end up doing is re-spooling this new roll that I created and double check all of the connection areas. And if it's not clean, go back through and try and reconnect it, maybe at an even lower temperature. This is the big problem I'm having. I just end up with lumpy connection points. I think this honestly just takes a good bit of patience and trial and error to get a good connection between the two filament rolls. When you're inserting the filament into the heating area, the heating area is like, I don't know, an inch wide. So it ends up heating up, not just the connection spot, but the, you know, about a half an inch on each side of that connection area. So it ends up deforming everything a little bit along the way. Also, while it's still warm, I'm trying to smooth out any lumps that might be there before I trim away the excess PTFE tube. And 
And thankfully this new spool is going so much smoother than the original. You can see here where the color transitions are working seamlessly between each of the different layers where it's connecting to the older spools of filament. And here's the finished print. It's from Nico Industries and it's the digging dog file. And this turned out really nicely here with all those different color transitions from those partial spools. I also ended up using the remaining filament to create this optical illusion file here, which the optical illusion kind of loses its effect when printing it in multiple colors. But again, it transitioned just fine between the three different remaining colors. But the big question is, would I really recommend this? It's on sale as a pre-order price for $35 over on Sunloose site, I think through the end of July. For 35 bucks, it's probably not a bad deal, but over that, I'm not entirely sure. You're also gonna end up needing a lot of these little individual connection pieces, and I'm not sure if they sell uh, these individually just yet. So you'll definitely wanna stock up on these when they become available because you're gonna go through a lot of them with just trial and error of getting these connections together. And the biggest learning factor that I had with this was just lowering the temperature down to 170 for PLA seemed to work best. You just put a light pressure on the two joins and then it will create that joint. You gotta let it cool for a few seconds and then smooth it out as well during that cooling process if there's any lumps and then you can remove that PTFE too. But as soon as you remove it out of that heat source, it's gonna want to snap at that connection point. So you have to be very careful with how you're handling it there initially while it's cool. If anything, I was most impressed with the spool rejoiner there or re-spooler here file that I found. This worked so well for this project. I'll have links to all of this down below. So if you're interested in picking up any of them or trying them out, you can do that. And I also have two of the filament connectors that I can give away. Sunlu sent me some extras. So I'm gonna have a giveaway link in the description down below. I'm gonna be limiting this to the folks in the US and Canada because I've been having lots of issues shipping internationally lately and stuff just not arriving or taking months for it to arrive. So apologies there. But I want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. If you're interested in things like my 3D printer settings that I use for a lot of my 3D prints, you'll find those over in my Patreon. And let me know what your thoughts are on Sunlu's new filament connector. I think in theory, this is a fantastic idea. It's almost like I need a third hand though to properly operate. Thanks again for watching all and I'll see you next time. I love how this quick video that I thought was only gonna be like five minutes turned into a much longer video with all the challenges that I ran into with it. But hopefully this gives you just a, a good actual use case of how this would work when trying to reconnect multiple spools. Also, you don't even really need one of these if you have one of the Bamboo Lab AMS systems there. It'll automatically roll the next roll of filament from one to the next as you're printing. Or if you have the Prusa XL with multiple tool heads or any of the Mark III or Mark IVs with the MMUs, it should be able to do that exact same thing for you.